Artract Forms Building 201 webinar. This is a continuation of our Artract Forms Building 101 four part series. Uh, in this series, we'll get into uh, a couple more controls that can be created with our Artract system. Today's topic will be about how to create a risk matrix, and then we'll eventually connect that risk matrix to a form type, and then we'll show you how to submit that risk analysis in the portal. Uh, if you haven't yet, I highly suggest watching our original series, uh, the 101 uh, lecture, if you if you will, uh, just uh, just because the basic steps of how to create a form section, form type option, I uh, will be going over a bit quicker. Uh, so if you do feel like you are uh, getting a bit confused, uh, the playlist will be in the description. So without further ado, uh, today we'll be building a three by three. Uh, risk matrix. So to begin, we're going to use the left sidebar, scroll all the way down to the other section, and select risk matrices. On the top ribbon here, we're going to select new, and we're going to call this matrix webinar name, that webinar risks. Matrix. We're going to hit save, and the first thing we're going to want to do is head over to this related section, head over to risk areas, and uh, what a risk area is is what did the incident hazard ID FLHA, you know, affect? Did it affect the impact, uh, the assets, or did it affect the environment? Did it affect people? Did it affect, uh, you know, the community? What it, what was the area that was impacted by the risk? So we're going to hit new risk area on top. And we're going to call our first risk area name assets. Hit save and then go back. From there, we're going to click another new risk area and we're going to call it environment. And we're going to hit save again. Once that's finished, we're going to want to go back to the general section, go into this risk severity consequence area, hit new risk severity consequence. From there, we're going to, since it's a three by three, we're going to start with just high, medium, low. We're going to name the severity, you know, high severity. Hit save. And then we see here that the risk impacts were already um, automatically filled out to include assets and environments. We're going to open up one of the risk impacts records and we're going to say this risk affected uh, our assets. As a description. And the reason we're going to bring a description here, I will showcase in the portal. And we'll only write descriptions for the assets records, where the environment records will not have a description to showcase the difference. Now, you might be tempted to just click new on the ribbon to create the next risk severity consequence. But the one thing to note there is that this risk matrix um, lookup field will not get filled out automatically, which might cause a bit of uh, discrepancy of what you've already created. So I'll just go back to the main shell and then click new here on this ribbon. From there, we're going to name it medium, hit save, go into the assets risk area and write that description once more. Obviously, if you're an HSC manager, uh, you're going to want to be a bit more descriptive than what, we're, what I'm writing. However, um, this for the demo for the demonstration, this will just do just fine. And finally, we're going to select low. Or low severity. Hit save, go into assets, and then write, you know, the barely. We'll hit save here, go back, go back to the main shell, and then we're going to go to risk probability. We're going to say, you know, high probability description. This uh, incident has a high chance to reoccur. Control A, Control C, just save that copy for later. Hit save, go back to the main shell as well. And obviously the probability, it's in the title. Um, it just, Obviously, for the probability, uh, the, the title itself uh, explains what it is. It just says how uh, high of a chance will this incident risk reoccur.
And then finally, we will add a low probability and hit save. All right, so we see that we have uh, three severities and three probabilities. The final thing you want to do in creating a risk matrix is head over to the uh, related section, go into risk groups, and because we're making a three by three, it's always best practice to make three groups. So um, a group could be, you know, high, medium, low as well. And how does that group the selections made? So what that means is if we head over to here to the risk levels, we see that there are nine possible options that they can choose from. So it could be a high severity with high probability, medium severity with a high probability, a low severity with a high probability, and so on. Um, and just like with the risk matrix, you know, if they select high and high probability or high and medium probability or medium and high, those might be grouped together as a, um, a high risk or a high severity incident. So obviously everyone's risk matrix is different, but you just want to sort of group up each combination together. So I'll head back over to risk groups, create a new risk group. You know, we'll call it a critical. We'll, also, we'll keep the name of convention of high. So high group. And if you know if it's in this group, we want to make sure that it's shown that red means dangerous. Hit save. From there, we're going to want to hit related. So we're going to go back, create a new risk group, call it that medium group. We're going to make it yellow, hit save, go back once more, new risk group, and call it the low group, and call it yellow. Hit save and go back to the main shell, hit related, sorry, select green. We're going to go back to the main shell, hit related, go up to risk levels, and then obviously you'll have your risk matrix beside you. Uh, to see which uh, which combination of severity and probability linked to what group. But for the sake of demonstration, uh, I will just be filling out quote unquote random ones. So we see here that the risk group is a high group. Risk group is a high group. So because we created that high group first, they're all going to default there. We're going to want to uh, change the ones that don't belong to the group. So we're going to say a low severity with a high probability. We're going to call that a medium group. Hit save. We're going to say that a medium severity with medium probability. We're going to call that a medium group. Hit save. And we're going to call the high severity with low probability a medium group as well. Save and go back. And then a low severity with medium probability, we'll call it low. And then these last two will just be called uh, low groups. Like so. So once that's finished, we see we have one, two, three in high, one, two, three in medium, and one, two, three in low. We head back to the general uh, tab. We see everything has been filled out just fine. We're going to go over to our test form type. Once the main form type shell opens up, we're going to want to go to this risk matrix field here and include our webinar risk matrix to the shell. From there, we want to either create a new section, or I already have the risk matrix section created. We want to go into the form type fields, and we want to name the field option uh, risk severity actual. We also have risk severity mitigated and potential. They all base off of the risk matrix shell we just created because we linked it to the form type in that main shell uh, earlier. But for the sake of reading through the incidents or sake of reporting, you can actually allow your field workers to select all three. 
So we're going to go back to the, the uh, one I created earlier. It's called Risk Severity Actual. We'll say it's required. And if we scroll down, we see here that we have a risk or severity. What this means is do you want the, uh, the field to show probability or not, or do you only want to see how it impacted our assets, our environment, or people, or community? If we select a risk, we see here that the probability label shows up. We'll call the probability label probability, and we'll call the impacts label impacts. And there we'll hit save, and we'll head over to our portal. Head over to our test group, test form type, and create new form. So once it's loaded, we see here at the very bottom, the risk matrix section and form type field is there. We're going to select this little blue box that lights up whenever we hover over it. And we see here that the impacts have a section and the probability have a section. Now, the first thing to note is we do want to only create one per um, area. If we select both a high risk and a high environment, that might mess up the calculations we just created. And the second thing to note is we created descriptions for the assets, but not for the environments. So the environment just took the naming convention. We gave the impact itself, whereas the asset gave uh, grabbed the description of uh, each individual impact. And for probability, it has the probability naming beside the uh, description of the probability itself. So for the sake of the uh, example, we're going to select a high risk asset and a high probability. Hit OK, and we see here that it was given to the high group. Now, one of the problems is that that high group only has uh, a one in front of it, when in reality, it should be given the number nine. So we're going to head back into our risk matrix, go back to our webinar risk matrix, hit related, hit risk levels. And we see here that all of them were given level one. So what we want to do is because high severity and high probability are the highest numbers and there are nine options, we're going to give that level nine. And we see here that it changed accordingly. And then we're going to say that, you know, a, uh, a high severity with a medium probability would be the next one. So we're going to call that one eight. And then so on and so forth while you're filling out the uh, the risk level level codes. So now if I go and I refresh the page, and I scroll back down to our risk matrix, and I select a medium risk with a high probability, it still says one. So now if I refresh the page, head over down here to the blue bar, select it, and we select a uh, medium probability with a high risk, and hit OK, and now gives us an 8. Whereas if I select any other ones, it will just give us that 1. But then we also see that the coloring will change, and the naming the naming will change depending on what we selected. So we see here we selected a low severity with a low probability. Therefore, it's a low group with a low severity and low probability. But if we select medium severity and low probability, it goes medium severity and low probability. Finally, we know that this is a three by three matrix because we have three options to choose from, um, from the impacts and three options to choose from, from the probability. If we head over to this incident report form, and we scroll down to actual risk. We see here that there are four options to choose from in each um, risk area, and that there are four probabilities. Therefore, that this is a uh, risk uh, four by four risk matrix. That concludes today's session. I know we went through a lot, and I, if you did get confused at any point, please leave us a comment or ask a question in the QA panel. As always, you can email support at neosystems.com for more information. Uh, and if you want to get to test drive the iTrack app, we have that available in our app source uh, marketplace as well. 
I hope this helped. And if you do have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Thank you and have a good day.